Hey guys, in today's tutorial I want to show you how to make some vellum cloth simulation in Houdini. This is a very beginner friendly tutorial, so let's dive in. So like always, the first step is to add a new geometry node. You can dive inside and the first step is to create some geometry to make the vellum cloth simulations. So to do that, we can add a grid. So here you can press P to open the parameter of this node and maybe we can change the size of the grid to something like three and three. So now let's create some points on the grid and later we can create a node called copy to point to copy some geometry on those points. So let's do that with a scatter node. Here with the scatter node, by default, the value is at 1000. So we can decrease it to something like six. In that case, we can create six geometry on those points. So now let's add a circle node. You can use any geometry to create your vellum close simulation. But in my case, I will use a circles. So here for the circles, I will change some settings. I will increase the division to 64. So now let's add a remesh node on the circle because for now you can see that we don't have any geometry at the center of the circle. So let's add a remesh node. So here on the remesh node, we can decrease the target size to something like 0.075. In that case, we can get a bit more resolutions on our polygons. So here you can also increase the iteration for the smoothing. So you can put it at something like 10 and now you can see that we have something very clean. So now let's add a UV unwrap node to get some UVs on our geometry later for the texturing. So now let's add a match size node. And here with the match size node, you can change the justify Y to minimum. In that case, you can see that we have the circles at the floor on the scenes. So now we can put a null here to specify this is the output for the circle geometry. So you can rename it something like out circles. So now you can duplicate this null and you can plug the points to this null and you can rename it something like out points. So now we can copy these circles on those points. So to do that, let's add a copy to point node. So you can plug the points to the second input and you can plug the geometry to the first input of the copy to points. Now you can see that we have this result. So now we can add a bit of randomness to the rotation on the y-axis and you can also add the randomness on the scale. So to do that, you have to add the randomness on the points. So here let's add an attribute randomized and let's start with the P scale. So here with the attribute randomized by default, the value is on the color. So you can see that you have the CD attribute here. So you can rename it with a P scale attribute and this is a one dimension value. So you can select the minimum and the maximum value for the P scale, but maybe we can go for something like maybe 0.8 and something like 1.2. And here you can go to the option tabs and you can play with the seed if you want to get different results. So now let's add a bit of randomness on the orientation on the Y axis. So to do that, you have a node called scatter and align. So here you can plug the grid to the first input and here you can replace the scatter node with this one and you can play with minimum angle and maximum angles. But let's do that with an attribute wrangle instead. So let's add an attribute wrangles and plug that to our points. Imagine having access to over 40 hours of exclusive Houdini tutorials, and that library keeps growing every month with brand new content. On Arda Labs, you'll find in-depth Houdini tutorials covering motion design, simulations, product visualization, and more. Plus, you get access to all project files so you can follow along step by step. And right now, we're offering an extra 20% off the annual membership, on top of the 10% discount already included when compared to the monthly plan. This exclusive deal is available for the first 30 people, so don't miss out. Click the link below, your 20% discount is applied automatically. Secure your spot before it's gone. So here to create a random value for the Y axis, it's quite easy. So let's start by creating a minimum and maximum angle value. So let's create float min angle. And here you can create a channel float and you can rename it something like min angle. So let's do the same for the maximum angle. So let's create a new float called max angle. And let's create a new channel float called max angle. So now let's create a little seed value to play with the randomness. So let's create a new float seed. And here we can create a new channel float and you can call it seed. So now let's create the random value. So to do that, let's create a float variable called something like angle degrees, for example. And here you can um, just add the random functions. So here you can type at pt num plus our seed. In that case, we can play with the randomness. And you can fit that between the minimum and maximum angle. So to do that, let's add the fit01 functions. In that case, we can fit the value from 0 to 1 to minimum and maximum value. So let's select our minimum angle. Control C, paste it here. And select the maximum angle, Control C, and paste it here. So now let's convert that to radians. So let's add a float angle rad, which is equal to radians. And we can convert this float uh, degrees to radians. So let's use the function called radians. And here you can type angle degree. 
So now let's uh, create our orient attribute. So at orient is equal to quaternions. And here you can just uh, use our angle rad. And here, if you want, you can create a channel vector for the axis you want to use. So you can type channel vector and you can call it something like axis. So now you can create the different parameter by clicking on this. And now you have the minimum angles, maximum angles, seed and the axis. So in our case, we want to create a random value for the y axis. So you can put one here and you can play with the value. So by default, the value is from zero to one. So you can go to these little gear icons and you can click on edit parameter interface. So here you can select the different value and you can put that from zero to one to minus 360 to 360. Same for this one, minus 360 to 360. And now you can play with different value. You can also play with the seed if you want to get some different results and you can play with the maximum value. So if you want to have this little tool for free, you can download our HGA for free on the descriptions. So you can add the AX random orients. And here you can plug the point to the first input and you can plug that here. And here you can define an axis. So basically in our case, it's Y axis. And here you can play with minimum and maximum and you can play with the seat. So you can download this HGA for free in the descriptions. So now we have this input geometry for the vellum cloak simulation. But before diving into the vellum simulation, we can copy each individual circles on their local axis. So to do that, you can add a normal node. Here you can put the normals on points. So now let's add a for each primitive loop. Now let's add an attribute angle inside. So you can plug the attribute angles here. So now you can select the first node of the loop and here you can create a meta import node. So with this node, we can get access to the iteration attribute. So you can plug this one to the second input of the attribute angles. Now you can go to the last input of the loop and here instead of by pieces or point, you can select by count. Now you can go to the first node of the loop and here instead of extract pieces or point, you can uh, select the option fetch input. So now you can go to the attribute angles and the first thing is to get access to the iteration attribute. So to do that, let's create an integer of uh, variables. So you can call it something like iter for iterations. And here you can get access to the detail attribute by using the detail functions. So here you can type one for the second input of the attribute angle. So basically we can read something from this node. And here we can get access to the iteration attributes and you can type zero. So now we can create a new float variable for the space between each individual copy. So we can call it something like space. And here we can create a channel float. So we can rename it something like scale one more time. So now let's update the position attribute. So at P plus equal at N multiply by our space variables, control C, control V and multiply by our iteration value. So now you can create this little channel by clicking on this and you can put the value at something like 0.025 for example. And now you can go to the last node of the loop and here you can select the iteration. So if you want to get uh, 15 copies, you can just increase the iteration to 15. And here you can play with the slider to control the scale. So here you can go to edit parameter interface. You can select the scale parameter and here you can put the value from minus 0.5 to 0.5. And now you can play with the value. Ready to level up your Houdini pipeline? Get the Houdini Script Pack. Complete toolkit, seven powerful tools today, plus every future release with free updates. Save time on composition, geometry splitting, material creation, and more. YouTube subscribers get 50% off with code TOOLKIT. Click the link in the description and transform your workflow today. So if you want to have access to this little tool as an HDA, you can download it for free with the link in the description one more time. So here you can just type copy local. And here you can plug the copy to point here. And now you can play with different copies. So maybe we want to set 10 copies. And here we want to set the space at maybe minus 0.025. And now you can see that we can play with that. And you can also add a class attribute and class two attribute for each cluster and also for each pieces. So it's up to you if you want to add these options. So you can download this little tool for free in the descriptions. So here for the number of copy, we can keep the value at 15 and here for the space, we can put it at minus 0.02. So you can adjust this value if you want. You can also play with the seed on the attribute angle here for the randomness on the Y axis. Also, you can play with the seed for the P scale, but just make sure you don't have any intersection with a different clause. So now we can start the vellum clause simulation. So first let's add a group node. So here with a group node, we can rename it something like pin. And here you can change the group type from primitive to points. And here you can put that in bonding regions and you can select the bonding box. So here you can select this node. You can select the little gizmo icon on the left. And here you can press shift and left click to increase the size of the box. So you can increase it on this side and also on the Z axis. 
So now you can go to the front view by pressing space 3 and here you can requisite the scale on the Y axis to maybe something like this. So now you can press space 1 to go back in the 3D view. And now let's configure the Vellum Close simulations. So you can add the Vellum Configure Close and you can add the Vellum Solver. So here on the Vellum Close constraint, you can play with different values for the stretch and also for the bend. So maybe in my case, I will increase it just a bit to something like this. And here for the Vellum Solver, I will go to the Force tab and here I will decrease the gravity to zero. So I will also go to the simulation tab and I will increase the cache memory to 50,000. So now you can go to the Vellum Solver to add a bit of forces to the simulation. So here you can add a pop wind and you can plug that to the force output. And here for the pop wind, you can play with different value, but in my case, I will put the amplitude to five. I will increase the swell size to 1.5 and here I will change the pulse length to two and I will decrease the roughness to 0.3. So now you can go back to the sub level by clicking on this and you can visualize the results of the Vellum Solver and now you can click on play to see the results of the simulations. So now you have this result and it's not that great because the good idea is to increase the scale of each individual clause for the simulations. So now we don't have any intersection but we can increase the scale over time. So to do that you can simply go to the Vellum Close and here you can increase the rest length scale on the stretch uh, tab and instead of one you can put the value at maybe something like 2.5. So of course here on the Vellum Close simulation, don't forget to select your pinpoints that we have created with a group here. So under pin to animation, you can select the pinpoint group and in my case, it's called pint. So now if you want, you can put that in cache so you can use the Vellum IO and here you can rename it something like Vellum Close. So here you can put that to explicit. You can put that in a cache folder and dollar $OS folder, which is the name of the node. And here you can put that in cache for, let's say, 144 frames. So you can right click on this one, delete channel, and you can replace it with the value at 144. So now you can select this node and click on save to disk. So now I have this result and we can add the Vellum post process node. So here with the Vellum post process, we can add subdivision to loop and we can add the subdivision depth to two. And here you can add a bit of thickness to the close by clicking on this little icon, extrude by thickness. And here you can control the thickness scale. So by default, the value is at one, but if you want, you can put it at 0.5. So it's a bit slow. If you want, you can decrease the subdivision depth to one, but it's up to you. It depends on the power of your, your computer, of course. If you decrease the subdivision depth, you will get a bit more low res uh, results. But I think it's quite enough in my case. So if you want, you can add a connectivity node. Maybe you can use a class attribute for the shading. So basically you can add the class attribute on primitives. And here you can see that you can select the class attribute and you can have a different uh, color for each individual clause. So you can use that for the shading. So now you can add the normal node. So now you can add an attribute delete node. And here on the attribute delete, maybe we can keep the velocity attributes. You can keep the texture and normal attributes. And I think it's pretty much it. Or maybe you can also add the class attribute if you want to use it for the shading. And now you can click on delete non-select. In that case, you have only those four attributes. So now if you want, you can add another file cache to put that in cache before rendering, but it's up to you. And now you can add a null to specify this is the output for the close simulation. So you can rename it out close. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one. Bye bye. Don't forget, you can get access to this project file with the link in the descriptions and you can download two HDA for free with the link in the descriptions. See you in the next one. Bye bye. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check artivoxar.com to get premium 3D resources. You can access to this project file with our Artifiles membership. See you in the next one. Bye.